Um, I just blew like 300 bucks on Colts jerseys. So, Jim Irsay, uh, Frank Reich, Chris Ballard, Matt Ryan. If y'all are watching this, I would like a Super Bowl in return. Anyway, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Jackson. I have my Matt Ryan jersey, finally. Powers here. And today we are back to our football videos. And I wondered, why'd you blow 300 bucks on Colts jerseys? Because I felt like it. I needed a Jonathan Taylor and a Michael Pittman too, bro. They're still in the mail, but that's besides the point. I got Matt Ryan finally. It arrived a few days ago. And I like it. It's a cool jersey. That's besides the point. Today's video has no structure to it whatsoever. It's just going to be my thoughts on the Indianapolis Colts offseason. Now, I took my break during all the major offseason moves, I feel like. So, the last one I recapped was Gilmore. So, I kind of just wanted to break down every single thing we did and basically give my thoughts about it and then uh, predict how we could potentially do the season. And this isn't the record prediction video. That is coming out soon, though. I'm doing the entire AFC South again because that's what I did last year. So, yeah. The first thing we had to talk about, Matt Ryan, uh, was a good move to get Matt Ryan. That was a for sure. I was very happy about that. Matt Ryan is the guy that's going to lead us to the promised land, the love of God, I hope. And he's better than Carson Wentz. If you say he's worse than Carson Wentz, you're a moron. That's just the if, ands, and buts about it. You're a moron if you think that Carson Wentz is better than Matt Ryan. Okay, that's just all I have to say about that. Next thing was uh, Gilmore and Rodney McLeod. I liked both of those signings. Uh, Gilmore being the bigger one. Gilmore is that lockdown corner we finally got that we needed severely, and now we have. And McLeod is going to help in the secondary, especially with Kahari Willis retiring, which is a pretty big deal because he was good. But we did draft that. I think his name is Nick Cross. He plays safety, so that pick makes a lot more sense now. Um, just talk about the draft in general. I think we had a phenomenal draft. I mean, we didn't even have a first-round pick and got graded one of the best drafts. I mean, we got Alec Pierce in the second round. I think he's going to be a stud. We got uh, Jelani Woods in the third round. We got uh, that lineman, uh, Reinman, I think is his name. Uh, Bernard Reinman, I think. That's his name. Yeah, he's... I don't remember what he is. He's not American. I just know that. He is a foreign player. And then we got Nick Cross, of course, and we got a lot of other shit, too. Like, I think we had a pretty solid draft. I think that our draft is really good this year. Seems like every year we have a good draft. We uh, go to the playoffs under Chris Bauer. That's how it's been. So hopefully that trend keeps up. Because last year it was a decent draft. It wasn't a great draft. But I, I like the pick of Jelani Woods. That's an underrated uh, pick, I think. I think he's like 6'7". Right, he's going to catch every jump ball. That's just facts. He's going to be great, along with Mo Ali Cox, bro. That's going to be phenomenal. I know Matt Ryan loves his tall receivers, so that's going to be good for him. And Alec Pierce, he's going to be a stud, I think, because he's um, his best things are slants and deep routes. Matt Ryan loves to throw deep. That was his favorite thing to do with Julio Jones. And now he's got two deep threats on one team with Michael Pittman Jr. and uh, Alec Pierce. So I think those are going to be pretty solid uh, weapons this year. Also, I like the move of potentially moving Naheem Hines into the slot. Frank Reich did say that he would be in more of like a Debo Samuel role this year. So I'm excited for that. I think that he's going to excel in that role. And Frank Reich did say if he was a fantasy owner, he would draft him. So my fantasy leagues, if he's there in like fourth round or so, I might scoop him up. Actually, not fourth round, like sixth round. That's about where he would go. If he's still there, I'm scooping him up. That's all I got to say. I think that, yeah, he's going to be good in that spot. I do love the signing of Philip Lindsay, too. I never talked about that. I think that is a great signing. It's an underrated signing. A lot of people are calling it bad, but I think it's good because he has played well when he's had a good O-line. 
when he was in Denver, he had he played pretty well. Then he went to two very terrible teams and put up decent numbers until he went to the Texans, which, I mean, no one plays good on the Texans, unless your name's Brandon Cooks, but that's besides the point. I think that it's a good signing. It's going to take carries away from Jonathan Taylor, which is something that's needed. We don't want Jonathan Taylor to be our entire offense, <clears throat> Tennessee Titans, because we don't want him to get hurt. Because that's what happens when a running back is your entire offense, Tennessee Titans, Carolina Panthers. Um, their running back gets hurt. It happens with Christian McCaffrey, and it's starting to happen with Derrick Henry. So y'all just need to not do that. and You don't want your star running back getting hurt. So I do like the fact that Jonathan Taylor, he's still going to be a big part of the offense, but he probably won't be the biggest part. I don't even, see him. I don't even know if he'll lead the league in rushing yards this year, personally, because teams are going to be so ready for it and Matt Ryan's going to torch him through the air. It's going to be interesting, though. I think that the Colts are going to be very good. The Colts have a solid team. Like, last year I was preaching 13-4 and four Super Bowl. I don't know about 13-4, and four, but I do think the Colts are going to be really good. We're winning the AFC South. I don't see how we lose that division. I mean, we got better, tremendously better. We On paper, we have a much better roster than we did last year. And we sh- we were a playoff team last year. We just had a uh, uh, garbage wins playing quarterback. Uh, I think our defense improved a lot. Our offense improved. We just got better everywhere, I think. And then Tennessee, they got worse. Jacksonville, they got better, but they're still a little bit away from contending. And Houston, they got better too, but they're, they're still a dumpster fire. But they did get better. But, I mean, they were about as bad as they could be, so they really couldn't get worse. So, we're the only team in that division that got significantly better to the point where it's going to make us contenders. And the good thing about Matt Ryan is he owns Jacksonville, so maybe we'll finally win in Jacksonville, and we play Houston week one, so maybe we'll actually win a week one game. I don't know. I'm excited for this season, personally. I don't, I'm not going to do my official record prediction right now, but I think the Colts, if I had to... Guess the ceiling and floor. I think our ceiling is 13 wins. Our floor is 11 wins. I think that will be around that territory. We'll win, our div- we'll win our division. And hell, I think we have a chance at the one seed, honestly, because you got the teams, they're going to be killing each other in the AFC North and NFC North and West. I don't know why I couldn't think of the divisions for a second. NFC, the AFC North and West, excuse me, are going to be fucking killing each other because all those teams are good. And then. That really only leaves us and the Bills to fight for the one seed if things go the way we should because we're in the easiest division in the entire AFC. Like, if we don't win the division, like, if we miss the playoffs, we, Frank Reich is gone. Frank Reich is gone if we miss the playoffs this year. We have no reason to be missing the playoffs. Like, if we lose our division and miss the playoffs, Frank Reich's done. If we make the playoffs but don't win our division, I think he's still fine. And if we go, like, 11-6 and six but miss the playoffs because of the AFC being stacked, that's different. I think Frank Reich still has a job if that happens. But if we, like, go 9-8 and eight again or 8-9, and nine, if we're around that territory again and miss the playoffs, Frank Reich's gone. You see this roster we have? There is no reason we should be going 9-8. and eight. Uh, Yeah, we do play a hard schedule, but, like, Come on. We play in the AFC South. We got at least four free wins right there. I only say four because Tennessee is going to give us problems. They always do. Jacksonville probably will too. Houston's the only team I'm confident that we can beat in that division, like t- both times. But I'm at the point right now, as a Colts fan, when you look at our schedule, not one team scares me. I'm not scared of one team on our schedule. I think that we could beat every single team that we play. I know that we won't, but we definitely could. We have the talent to do that. Like, I'm not scared of the Chiefs, the Broncos, the Raiders, or the Chargers. I'm not scared of any of them. I'm not scared of anyone in our division. I'm not really scared of anyone else we play. I'm not scared of the NFC East or the NFC least. I mean, the Eagles could give us some problems because we do play them this year. We do play Washington as well. We should beat them. And then Giants will probably beat them. And then the Cowboys could give us some problems because... Cowboys are usually find a way to be competitive when they have Dak Prescott. So I think that the Colts have a very good chance to make a deep playoff run this year. If we can stay healthy, the Colts will make a deep playoff run. That's all I got to say. And with that, 
Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on the bell notification, and, and follow everything in the description box. See you guys next time. Bye. It would be great if I could stop stuttering.